So today I have this big huge basket of books that I have compiled, some of which I have pulled off of my shelves that I've already read, but most of them are books that I have not yet read that are on my summer TBR. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. So today I'm going to share 15 middle grade books that have a summer theme to them. So these four are books that I have read and just wanted to highlight them because I know that they do have summer themes in them. The first one is Newberry Medal winner Rabbit Hill by Robert Lawson and this has animal protagonists in it and it's a really great read aloud. The next one is Professor Diggins Dragons by Felice Holman. There are illustrations in there and it is your basic summer adventure for middle grade kids and it's a quick read would also be great for a read aloud. Next is also a Newbery Honor Medal and Coretta Scott oh no Scott O'Dell Award, and this is One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. It's also won, oh, it did win the Coretta Scott Award and the National Book Award, so lots of awards. It's the tale of three girls in the summer of 1968. The next one that I've read is The Penderwicks, and that is also a National Book Award winner. And this is the story of a summer tale of four sisters, two rabbits, and a very interesting boy. This is also kind of a adventure, coming of age story, very well known. And it's also a um, quartet. There's four books in this series. Okay, so now we move on to my TBR. So I have two classics, what I would consider classics. The first one is Jane of Lantern Hill. This is by L.M. Montgomery, who wrote the very well-known Anne of Green Gables series, as well as many other, Emily of New Moon, and um, The Blue Castle, and Pat of Silverbush, and all of those. This one, I think, spans across more than just one summer, but the first main part of this is in the summer. It's about a girl who lives in Toronto with her mother and she discovers that her father is not dead as she thought and he actually is alive and he wants her to come to Prince Edward Island for the summer. And so again, coming of age and family drama ensues. And then I also have as a classic Swallows and Amazons by Arthur Ransom. Sorry, my chickens are excited about something. And this is your quintessential summer story. I think it's about kids whose parents allow them to go out to an island for the summer and hijinks ensue between two groups, but I think they end up friends. That's all I know about it, but I this is going to be a read aloud with my kids as well, a family read aloud together. Okay, next on my TBR is Chasing Redbird. This is by Sharon Creech who wrote a Walk to Moons, which got her the Newberry medal. Um, this one is similar idea, coming of age for a young girl and she has experienced some death and tragedy in her life, I think. And it seems like I think it's gonna be about her processing that. This is The Summer of Monkeys by Wilson Rawls. This is the author who wrote Where the Red Fern Grows, which I have read. This is about, I think, monkeys that have escaped from a circus in the Oklahoma Ozarks. And it's about a reward, I think, for capturing the monkeys and the main character, his family needs the money and so he tries to capture the monkeys. The next is another Newberry. It is called The Moon Over Manifest by Claire Vanderpool. And this is about a young girl whose father sends her off to live for the summer with a friend. And 
she is kind of disappointed, I think, with, come, I think it's Abilene, Texas, kind of disappointed about her summer plans, but then things kind of get exciting. This actually says, um, oh, it's not Abilene, Texas. Her name is Abilene. She goes to Manifest, Kansas, which is Manifest. So it says, Abilene throws all caution aside when she heads down the mysterious path to perdition to pay a debt to the reclusive Miss Sadie, a diviner who only tells stories from the past. So some mysticism there. Moomin Summer Madness. I've read one Moomin Troll book. This one is the summer version. This is another Newberry. It is Hawk's Hill by Alan Eckert. This is a story about a boy in 1870 that who wandered away from his house on Hawks Hill and disappears and it's how he survived most of a summer in the wilds by foraging a bond with a female badger. Next is The Westing Game. This one's probably a little bit of a stretch on the summer theme. Um, this is a buddy read with Chantel at Intentional Homeschooling and Intentional Life. And you can see it's got the fireworks. It starts, it starts and ends with 4th of July, but there's a whole bunch of time that goes in between. This is a mystery. In the mystery, it's figuring out who is going to um, be able to get the inheritance from someone who has died. This is also a Newberry Honor Award. This is Three Times Lucky by Sheila Turnage. This one is about a girl who, I think she lives in the South, and there is a murder, and she is part of figuring out what the mystery is there. This one is Here in the Real World by Sarah Penny Packer. She also wrote Pax, which I have read, and this is the story about a boy who has to spend the summer filling his time differently than I think he had imagined. And again, I think there's some coming of age development in this and something that they need to accomplish by the end of the summer. This one is The Wolf Keepers by Elise Broach. I found this based on the recommendation from Carly Reader. And this is the story of a couple kids who endeavor on trying to save or protect wolves in Yosemite. I just, I also really love the, I don't know if you can see with the plastic cover, but this is their summer of working at the zoo and trying to help wolves. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And since I'm kind of new to this booktube thing, I'm not sure if anyone is interested in a follow-up to get the my reviews or thoughts on these once I read them. So if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing, then just leave that in the comments below. Until next time. It's about a girl who lives in, I'm not sure.